We currently operate 15 schools, mainly Joburg, Pretoria, and then we've got one in Stellenbosch. We are educating over 7,000 children and employing 750 staff members. We've pretty much doubled as a network since we started Spark, so we've had huge growth. Um, and next year we'll be operating 21 schools, so 20 primary schools, one high school, and aim to educate over 12,000 children. But we're going to continue to open schools across the country um, and ensuring that we reach as many communities as possible. I mean, I was walking around earlier today as I came in and lots of construction, uh, lots of banging and drilling and so on. And obviously, this is a sign of growth. This is a sign of many and bigger things to come. What does the future look like and how does that tie to the vision that you and your co-founder had for Spark Schools? So, Naz, I mean, I'm glad that you're experiencing the building because we are in the building stage of the organization. Yeah. Um, it can be very tough for some people, just depends on the way we wide. But for me, it's very exciting. We're breaking new ground. Our vision is that South Africa leads global education, which is obviously very ambitious, very powerful statement, especially when we rank bottom of the world. Yeah. But everything that we do at Spark, we say, what does this look like at a national level? So if we ever went into a um, partnership with government, would we be able to roll this out? And so... Our vision is to continue opening schools across the country over the next few years and engaging more where we can on a policy level um, and really hoping to take a lot of what our leading practices within the organization and how can we better support schools within our community. That's amazing. So it's a lot about scale and what and how does how do we make the excellence that we are expressing a, a national expression which is actually uh, amazing but I do want to also talk about your leadership journey um, I, it was quite it's quite a pleasant surprise to find out that you're a tutu fellow as well so it's, it was great to actually sit down with the tutu fellow but I know that leadership must be part of your DNA and just how you're wired let's talk about the things that you believe have served you uh, in the ability to lead yourself but also to lead others I think um, the number one thing is probably grit, or as people say, persistence. So never giving up because you absolutely have really down days or days that you're like, what's going on? Why am I actually doing this? But what, what gets you through? And so I'm completely convinced that what we're doing can create systemic change. And not only in South Africa, but I believe we can um, work with different countries across the continent or in other developing markets to support that. I'm always learning. Um, I'm really focused on self-reflection, so constantly looking at how can I better improve my practice and learning, I mean, in a high growth organization, you need to make sure that you're ahead of the game, otherwise very quickly you can become <laughs> yeah. irrelevant. And yeah. so I'm constantly seeking ways to um, learn both in terms of my leadership style as well as it, what does it look like a CEO running a big yeah. organization. So I've got a huge amount of support networks that support me in this journey. And, and if you're building an organization that you almost want to inculcate that ability to self-reflect even with teams, how do you do it? How do you make sure that everyone is hungry to not only grow and to learn from whether it's mistakes or successes that they have in the business, but just this desire collectively to be better. Um, what are your strategies as the CEO? So it's involved in our recruitment process yeah. in terms of the type of people that we recruit. So mm. we call them, we recruit for gems, which <laughs> is self, and the last one is self-reflection. Ah. So, so right from the get-go in the beginning of the interview process, we see how people are able to take yeah. feedback um, and see if they are able to improve their practice. And the whole DNA of the organization's been built in terms of weekly coaching or feedback. Yeah. Um, if you look at the school level, our school leaders are focused on instructional leadership where they spend a lot of time with their team looking at ways to better improve our practice so we can better serve our children. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the people that have really struggled at Spark are the people that haven't shown that characteristic, yeah. um, and so they haven't lasted long with us, but the people that have moved within the organization in terms of promotions, the core exco ex team, are the people that are able to con constantly self-reflect. Yeah. And, and oftentimes self-reflection is almost undermined as not a, a key part of how you grow as a leader. But you know, when we talk about leadership states, we also generally make the mistake of only talking about the good things mm -hmm. and you know the leadership behaviors that have served, uh, served us. But there must be leadership behaviors that um, didn't serve you, things that you expressed as leadership, and, and maybe even quite early on you realize, I need to actually work on this if I'm going to be able to lead a team and a lead and be a leader in the country as well. Anything that comes to mind for you? I think probably the top one is in terms of control and wanting everything to be perfect. You know, if in a high growth organization with 
obviously a huge amount of people, you can't have control at all times. So what instead of trying to hold everything close to me or double checking on what everyone's doing, how do I rather empower the team around me and delegate appropriately so that they are able to fulfill those tasks? Another aspect is I probably should have trusted my intuition a lot sooner. You often question feelings or ideas or thoughts or decisions that you want to make that can be seen to be controversial. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, that's why you're the leader. So you've got to be the one that's courageous. Yeah. You've got to be the one that's bold. And I've really learned to trust and listen to my intuition more and more mm -hmm. over time. And it often has led down the right route. Mm -hmm.